as citizens, Ira Iraqi artists like the rest of the population. So they are subject <coughs> to the killing in the last five years, to the kidnapping. We have many of them kidnapped. Uh, some of them were threatened, so they had to flee the country. Others were actually assassinated. Khalil al zahawi uh, he is one of the most, the Muslim world's, and I'm quoting the BBC here, one of the Muslim world's leading calligraphers had been shot dead by gunmen in Baghdad in May 2007. In the 1990s, he taught students from all over the Middle East. It is said that anyone in Iraq who wanted to be considered proficient in Arabic calligraphy had to have his seal of approval. This man, he was shot <coughs> and he was waiting for a taxi. And there was no investigation. No one has been charged like many other Iraqis and their thousands. According to the Ministry of Culture, and I'm quoting the Ministry of Culture now, and the senior, uh, the deputy of the minister himself, Jabari Jabari, he was saying, I'm quoting him, 60% of our intellectuals, writers, poets, artists, have to flee the country since 2003. I, I, I like to argue that it's not 60% of our, it's over than, more than that approximately 80% of our Iraqi intellectuals. So how do they survive financially, the people who remained in Iraq, the artists themselves? Are there Iraqis buying their artwork? How they manage? Well, there are few uh, sources of finance. I start by the Ministry of Culture itself, uh, as it is. Until now, we have three ministers. Uh, the, fir the first one of them was, uh, the first one was a communist. Uh, the second one, Nuri Arrawi, he was a police officer. And the third one, called Asad Al Hashimi, he's on the run now because he's been sentenced to be hanged if he'll be arrested uh, and uh, for a crime killing people. So these are the ministers for culture in Iraq <coughs> under occupation. The senior deputy, Jabir al uh, he's a member of the Supreme Council for Islamic Revolution. He is a political mouthpiece for the political sectarian political party. And also, he's a poet. He claims to be a poet. But if you look at his poetry, he's specialized in writing about religious occasions, specifically, and sectarian religious occasions, all his poetry. But uh, anyway, what is the achievement of this ministry in the last five years? Well, they issued one magazine uh, called Tashkil, uh, and that's been issued only this year, in January this year. It hasn't been distributed yet, because they said we don't have the finance to do that. So it's sitting there, the magazine. And they are trying, there is an initiative by this ministry, to persuade Iraqi intellectuals, who they claim like 60% outside the country, to come back to Iraq. How are they, going, how are they doing that, I mean? Would they tell them that Iraq is secure? Come on, no. They are saying, well, we're offering you $450 and a free ticket to Iraq. This is quoted as well by the deputy. And when they ask about the security situation, how can we defend <coughs> ourselves, how can we survive the killing and everything, well, the suggestion is like academics, the initiative regarding academics and the consultants, the doctors, they are suggesting that artists and intellectuals should carry guns. So we are permitted to carry guns and machine guns. Uh, we are creating another militia in addition, but this, now, this time now it's an intellectual militias to defend themselves. This is the part one. The second one is the Iraqi Plastic Artists Society. Uh, this is uh, been established 50 years ago by Iraqi artists, and uh, it's uh, still active. Actually, they're doing some good work. Uh, they just uh, celebrated their golden jubilee, displaying works by 80 painters, 50 scu 55 sculptors, and 15 quarters uh, January this year. They managed, despite all the difficulty, to raise some money on their own. 
and to publish issued five books about Iraqi art. So they are far ahead of the Ministry of Culture with all the money, with all the corruption, with all the millions of pounds and dollars available for them. Uh, the third institute is called Dar al Mada Foundation. And this is a serious, I mean, this is something that has to be looked at in a serious way and examined the work of this foundation. The director is called Fakhri Karim. He's an ex politburo uh, member of the Communist Party. And a senior, he's now the senior advisor to what's called the president of Iraq, Jalal Talabani, at the same time. He, is, he has a budget beyond anyone. It goes up to millions and millions of dollars. Uh, what he does, he organizes exhibitions in order to promote the agenda of the occupation, and specifically in Kurdistan area, in the Kurdish area up in the north of Iraq. Uh, no one of people he organized exhibition to uh, will manage or will mention the word occupation. It's like what you said, that we are not supposed to mention uh, the word. It's a taboo uh, there. Fourth, uh, I mean, they, some of them they taint some of the artists, they are resorting to their old skills of calligraphy. So whenever someone is killed, they can draw the <coughs> colors of the dead people. This is a source of income for artists now. Uh, sadly, it does remind people of the 1980, 1988, the period of the Iraq-Iran war, when the number of the killed Iraqis, the civilian, uh, the uh, soldiers, uh, my families write those banners in the houses, so you need someone to, to, to write it down. Uh, there is, uh, the, the, the final source of income nowadays is the, what we call the painting on the walls. Uh, the walls, as you know, perhaps I, I think there are 14 walls uh, dividing Baghdad <coughs> at the moment. When I say about walls, I'm talking about walls, the height is almost like the apartheid wall in Palestine, mm -hmm. separating the Palestinians. And uh, we're talking about 12 feet, three and a half meters high. Uh, they're using blocks, built with concrete blocks, each weighing 14,000 pounds. This is dividing, we have 14 walls. Uh, the Iraqis call them segregation walls, sectarian walls, prison-like walls. Uh, the Americans call them the Baghdad Wall, or according <coughs> to the areas, which divide it all. Uh, and Abamiya is called the Great Wall of Abamiya, for example. But in some areas, it's boxing in people with their own markets, with their own market, with their own, so it's almost like each area is a completely separated area than the others. Uh, in Baghdad. Uh, Sadr city uh, itself being divided to three sections, completely separated from each other in order to control it. There are, of course, points where you can walk in, uh, entry points and exit points. And it's all uh, manned by the US and Iraqi troops in both entry and exit points, the city. So. What's that related to artists? Well, uh, a contractor came up with this idea who the company is working in Baghdad airport that, well, when, if we want to receive people, if we want to encourage people to say Iraq is safe and secure and everything, especially foreign people going to invest their money, they cannot really with all these walls are surrounded by. So they came up with this idea of beautifying the wall. Painting on the wall. Some people are thinking, great, this is a survival of the artist. This is our artist art thing. It is not the Iraqi artist. It is companies, uh, contractors working for the US troops uh, with the booklets. They distribute this booklets with the specific paintings should be painted on these walls. And they are not Iraqi artists. They are students or whoever cut the technicality of drawing and copying this by paying them $20 a day. So there is a difference between uh, Now, finally,